Hello and welcome to AV Cyberactive. Hi, and today we're going to discuss the most frequently asked SOC or Security Operations Center L1 interview questions. My name is Avinash. I'm a seasoned prof security professional and working for a multinational company. So let's get started. The first question of the day, and that is what is or what are vulnerability, risk, and a threat? I'll try to explain this with the help of an example. Now, suppose we have a door and that is protected by a lock. You also have a bad actor, a, a person standing right outside the door and is looking at the door, trying to find out how can I get inside the door. This person is basically, now that you know, is your threat who's trying to get inside the door. And behind the door, you have your, of course, valuables and your info, important files and your confidential documents. The lock over here, if it's not properly locked or the lock has is weak this is your vulnerability which means this is a gap or a loophole in your system the goal of your bad actor or the threat actor is to exploit this loophole so that they can get access to the files which are inside or behind the door so again the vulnerability is the loophole or the gap that you have in in the door that is the weak lock and your threat is the bad actor. Now there's a formula you should know that risk equals threat multiplied by vulnerability, which means the overall, the overall risk is the bad actor trying to exploit the gap or the vulnerability so that they can get hold of your files. This entire thing is called the risk. Now to explain that in plain English, explain in plain English, the risk or, or the vulnerability, it is the gap that of, or that can lead to a huge security loss. And a threat is someone who's trying to make the most use of the gap in the protection or the loophole, who's trying to exploit the loophole. Lastly, the risk is the potential that your business might f face because of the loophole or the gap. For example, the attacker is trying to crack a weak password and then trying to exploit it, which can have a great impact on your business. The difference between hashing and encryption. This is again a very frequently asked SOC interview L1 level question. Let me try to explain. Suppose you have a file and you're trying to send it to another party which wants to have a copy of that file, but want to read that file. We call this party A and this call party Z. Now party A has the file in plain text. It's your MS Word file or your codes or your source code files, which is in plain text. You don't want anybody to read this file or intercept this file in between. So what you do, you both negotiate that you both of them will have a common key and you both will share that key using some external mechanism and party A will encrypt, which means it will convert this plain text into a cipher text and send this over to party B. The party B already knows the key to unlock or decrypt the file and can convert from cipher text to plain text. So you see encryption is a way how you can keep the data confid confidential. So the main reason why you encrypt a file because you want to keep your da data and your files which are in transit as confidential. Now the huge and the main benefit of this is obviously this confidentiality. And of course it is, as you saw in this example, it is reversible, which means once you encrypt the file, you can even decrypt it. So it's reversible. Now taking a similar example, I'll try to understand, make you understand the hashing. Now hashing is very similar, but kind of very different. Let's take this example. Suppose you have a file and you want your party B to know, or party Z in this case, to know that you have the party A has sent the same file which party Z is decrypting. How can you make sure that you know data was not intercepted in the middle or there was no man in the middle attack? Now party A, what they will do is make the file go through a hashing algorithms. So there's another video that I've made, which I'll link in the cards as how hashing works. So you might refer to that video. So overall, there are many hashing algorithms that you can use. You've got MD5, SHA-1, SHA-2, SHA-3. There are many uh, algorithms 
hashing algorithms that can be used now you and which produces a fixed length output which has multiple alphanumeric characters on them now when you generate the hash of a file it'll just look like a regular text or long text message which you you know you'll not be able to understand because it's just uh, identifier now when you when a the party a sends the file over to party b after encryption it also hashes the file and sends this one this uh, the hashed output as well with the file now when party b decrypts that file also calculates the hash on the other side there are many tools available it can be done in windows powershell and for linux and for linux as well there are many tools inbuilt tools available party z calculates the file hash and if it's the same hash that is found which means the party the file that party a sent party b has party z has received the same file which means there was no tampering that went with the data however if this file the hash does not read the same as the one that party a has sent in this case which means the file was tampered in between and you can go back and tell party a that hey the hashes do not match which means something has wrong went when you sent me the file so you see the difference here that you use encryption so and it's reversible but the motive here is different. The motive here is confidentiality. But hashing has a different motive. The motive for hashing is to make sure that the file has not been tampered with or to verify that the integrity of the file has been maintained. Let's try to read in plain, plain English. It's between uh, hashing and encryption. So when it comes to hashing, it is irreversible and encryption is reversible. So encryption reflects confidentiality. Remember this, encryption is reversible and reflects confidentiality. Hashing only verifies that the file, no, nothing has been changed in the file and the, ver the file's integrity has been maintained. That's the only thing the hashing achieves, integrity of the file system. Okay, let's move to the next question. Next question, the difference between PT and VA and the, one, and the audiences who are not clear what's PT and VA, so that's PT stands for Penetration testing and VA stands for vulnerability assessment. I'll start with vulnerability assessment with the help of, of by giving you an example. Now suppose we have a computer system and we have a server. A server is running some variety of custom variety of uh, an application that is meant to do only a specific set of jobs. In this case, just do vulnerability assessment. Now the server will try to run a, a piece of software and it will do a few tests. Let's say for example, it does trying four tests on this machine. The first test was to check if the HTTP port open, HTTP port 80 is open or not. Just probing, okay? It's doing nothing else. Just probing, hey port 80, HTTP, are you open? Yes or no? If you get a reply, it may be open. Then you try to again, Send, try to send it an HTTP URL request or sometimes a directly transversal request and check and see how your computer system responds. This computer system can be an IDS, IPS or any network device. It doesn't matter. It's just a computer system. And then you try to put in a request over port 22 and you also put in a request over port 25. Port 22, SSH, port 25, SMTP, SMTP mail relay. Now, what's interesting here is when the server tries to probe, it gets a reply for HTTP, which means it is open. Directly transversal, okay, we, you did not get any reply from it, which means the server is not acknowledging any kind of scripts. And you got a port 22 also denied, so nothing, no reply from there. And port 25, nothing from here. Now, what you can see from here is, um, port, is, is the server supposed to serve Port 80 requests, that is HTTP requests. You also know that port 80 is not secured, so you already know that you are already vulnerable to um, any kind of uh, man in the middle plain text attack. So if somebody is able to intercept this data man in the middle attack, they would be able to see everything in plain text. So you know that you are already vulnerable and you might want to tell the server owner, you go ahead and apply some kind of encryption or TLS SSL encryption onto this one. By the way, there's a video I made on TLS SSL encryption. You should, uh, or DLS versus SSL, you should definitely go and check it out. I'll link it in the cards and also in the description. Now coming back to vulnerability assessment. Now port 80 is open. 
So you just did an assessment that your port 80 is open over here. It's up to the server owner if they want to say that, yeah, I know I'm vulnerable, but I don't want to close it because of XYZ business reasons and the risk has already been accepted. So that's fine. Now let's take the same example and try to explain vulnerability assessment or penetration testing. Sorry about that. Now, again, you have your same computer system. I'll try to draw the same computer system once again. And you do the same four tests. That's HTTP, port 25, port 22, and a script directly, directly transversal, which means this is a type of an SQL injection attack. Now, then you find the same results. Your HTTP is open, directly transversal. You're not getting any reply, not sure why. Uh, port 22, it's closed, no, no reply from here. And port 25, again, no reply from here as well. So what you can, what you try to do is, you know, port 20 plain text is open, but this time this, this server, it's running a special kind of a software or a script. And this time it goes a step further. It tries to execute or uh, inserts a payload in this script and it delivers the payload to the computer system. The computer system sees it, or depending on the vulnerability that was discovered, sees it that as that, hey, something has come up, I should go ahead and execute it. The payload has a malicious file into it and it will execute this file. So here's the difference between penetration testing and vulnerability assessment. Vulnerability assessment only assesses and says, here's the result. It doesn't do anything beyond that. This port is open you are vulnerable to this kind of attack. Uh, these are the services running on the computer system and that's it. it. It doesn't go beyond that. Penetration system goes a layer beyond that. It will actually try to exploit that vulnerability that was found and try to penetrate inside the network. Of course, when you do the penetration testing, you never do it in a production environment in organizations, and at least bigger organizations, you always do it in a development, a de development environment. So yeah, that's the difference between penetration testing and vulnerability assessment. Let's try to read this in plain, plain English. So what's the difference between PT and VA? So when it comes to PT, it stands for penetration testing and it's used for finding vulnerabilities before the attacker can use it for data breach, which means you're trying to, the penetration testing is actually trying to exploit the vulnerability. And VA, uh, obviously, it's the most the softer kind, so it stands for vulnerability assessment, which is only looking for flaws in respect to your network and application and doesn't do anything else. Again, vulnerability is only looking for flaws, doing nothing beyond it. Penetration testing is actually exploiting the vulnerabilities. So the best way for you to protect yourself against any kind of uh, attacks on a system is to always do system hardening and follow the proper change management and config management on your organization. Okay, with that, we come to the end of this video for Q&A for SOC L1 uh, questions that are most frequently asked. If you want me to cover more topics, let me know in the comments. I'll put in a link for a website where you can go and explore more SOC L1 interview questions and Q&As. Feel free to visit that website and also give me your feedback. Please remember that uh, security is just not one person's responsibility. It's the, it's the entire organization's responsibility. Alright, I thank you all for watching this video and I hope you all have a great day ahead. Bye now.